All right, so congratulations. We've gotten to the last step. Uh, this is the end of our three statement model. Once we finish this, it will be circular and every assumption we change will flow through to the all financial statements. Again, if you don't do this three statement model, if you change an assumption, uh, maybe you're missing something. For example, if you change an assumption that affects cash, um, that requires the, the you know debt and more interest expense, and you don't have the circular model, it's going to be hard to find out exactly what the implications of that assumption are on the entire business. So that's why we're doing this. Um, I made a mistake in my last video with the cash flow statement. I added uh, these two, to, or subtracted these two. They should be added, uh, just because of, again the convention, the way I had my minuses, I wasn't paying attention. Um, so really, our cash flow uh, available uh, for financing is um, you know really less. Uh, it's not the sum; it's, it's, it's that. And then when I went down here, I'm going to relink this to this sum. So the cash available for financing is equal to the previous cash balance plus uh, left after this period is equal to that. So we've got you know a lot of cash available for financing. Um, so when we get to debt, what do we do with debt? Um, well, we don't have any debt in our balance sheet right now. This is a pretty unique company. Some of them don't, but it's rare, where they don't have any short-term debt on the current liabilities, and they don't have any long-term debt either. You can see they have nothing. So the only time this company, they clearly have a strategy of not having debt. The only time they would raise debt is if they had a large acquisition or they really wanted to invest heavily. You know, they've got, they're in a really good cash position right now. So uh, I'm not worried about this. So I'll just explain to you what I would do um, in a normal situation. Really not worrying, worried about any of our assumptions changing this uh, cash flow for financing thing. Uh, it's just, it's, it's too much cash. Um, what you would do normally is you would have a short-term debt and a long-term debt section here. And you'd say, okay, well, I have cash flow remaining for financing. If this is negative, that means I need more cash. If this is negative, I'd have an if statement uh, called a cash sweep. Uh, you can look it up, cash sweep formula. Um, here that would say, okay, if this is negative, I would need to issue some sort of debt, whether it's short-term debt, long-term debt, etc. I would need to issue something. Um, so you'd have that formula in here, and you'd have a repayment formula saying if the cash is positive or, or it's due, uh, repay it. With a long-term debt, you know when cash is due because you look and look at the 10K and someone took out 10-year debt in 2005, so they owe it back in 2015. Uh, issuance that you also plan usually in the 10k and right now I'm going to say the issuance is zero and therefore the repayment is zero in a real model this would all be formulas but you would take the beginning plus the issuance minus the repayment so in a real model these would all depend on uh, whether or not this is positive or negative but because this is so far positive I'm not going to worry about it right now uh, you can look up the cash sweep formula if you want later and so we've got our ending long-term debt Let's calculate our interest expense. It's the interest rate. I just guessed 6% times that long-term debt. This is going to flow back into our income statement. So in case we do decide to make this 500, you know, this will flow through and actually affect the rest of our model also. I'm going to make these blacks. I hard-coded these zeros. Oh, sorry, I'm going to make these um, blue. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can then go and start linking things. Uh, let's build out the rest of our cash flow from financing statements. So we've got the issuance of revolving credit. We didn't do a revolver. A revolver is basically a credit card. It's short-term debt. We don't have it. So I'm even just going to delete this line. Issuance of long-term debt. We have that. Pay down of long-term debt. Uh, we've got repurchase of equity. That's in our shareholders equity. I believe it was zero. We've got dividends, which is also from our shareholders' equity. It was also zero. But if those ever change, we want them to flow through. So we have them here anyway. Cash flow from financing, uh, zero, because we didn't raise any money through equity or debt. Those are the two ways you raise money through cash flow. Any cash is the you know, cash available after operations and investing, plus cash flow from financing. Great, we've got an ending cash balance. All right, let's take this ending cash balance and put it into our balance sheet. This is where everything starts to connect, guys. Um, so we're going to go link that in here. That's one missing hole. We had another missing hole here, that long-term debt. So let's copy that in. Uh, that was in our debt schedule. 
ending long-term debt. I'm going to copy that in. And then the last thing we need to do is the link in interest expense. And then once we do this, everything's going to connect to each other. So if we raise debt, we raise interest, we raise the interest expense. So the cash flow statement moves to the uh, balance sheet, moves to the income statement. It's going to give me an error. Watch. Uh, when I get to the interest expense, it gives me a circular reference warning because everything is tied to each other. So it's going to give me this warning. It's going to do this. But we, normally this is a bad thing. We actually want it. So we want Excel to let us do this. We'll go to File, Options. Formulas, enable iterative calculation. This will allow everything to flow through each other. All right, so now that error has gone away and it's all linked. We are all done. Well, we're not all done because we actually need to double check to make sure our balance sheet still ties. If we didn't do this well, this will not continue being true. So let's find the difference here. Assets minus liabilities. This is our check because assets always need to be liabilities plus owner's equity. So if these continue to be zero, we've done it well, uh, because for every credit there was a debit, and we accounted for all of that in all of these financial statements. So we've got a big problem here. Now we need to audit this. We are off by a lot. Uh, we messed something up. I messed something up. Um, and now we need to audit and figure out what is going on. Uh, one thing was going on. I didn't calculate this formula over, so that changed a lot. Um, I needed to make sure that formula was connected. Okay, so now I'm still, you know, pretty far off. I'm, I'm, my assets are more than about three times uh, my liabilities and owner, owner's equity. So let's see what the big things are. If my assets are 900. I need 900 of liabilities and owner's equity. I've got 200 liabilities, 200, and 100. So the big difference is probably here because this drops 500 to 100. This stays constant. I'm not too worried about that. This stays pretty close. So I'm, I've probably got these two right. So let's see what went wrong here, because I went from 574 to 111 in my equity. So I'm going to go back down to my shareholder's equity formula and figure this out. But again, I dropped here. What am I missing? I'm missing, oh, okay, so here we go. I need a beginning balance, because my total shareholder's equity ending, I'm going to change this to ending, Ending shareholders' equity is equal to the beginning balance plus all the additions. And now I'm going to add this in. And now let's go up and check that balance sheet. This is still not right. Okay, so I see. What I did here was I pulled this from the shareholders' equity formula, and I'm going to pull this in. What, what I had done is I copied this formula over, so this went down to 94. Really, it was just a pull. So I'm going to turn this back and keep these formulas the same. So I'm going to save, go up, and check my formula again, and we've got zero. So I've got a fully circular model. Now, anytime I change any assumption in any of these anywhere, and any of these blue spots, any assumption in any blue spot, I can change, if I don't like this growth, 10%. And that will reflect on the equity that I need to raise. That will affect on the debt I need to raise. That will affect on the income statement. That will affect on the interest expense. That will affect everything. Um, and because these things all are in relationship to each other, this is the best way to figure out the full picture of your business. If you just did a cash flow statement based on this net income, yeah, you know, you, it's pretty close probably, but if, if there are any significant debt raises or if there are any significant cash needs or anything like that, your model is going to be way off. So this is the only way to make sure that all your numbers are in there right. Um, the model is flowing through, and now we have an accurate representation of what the business looks like if the assumptions are correct. Now, our assumptions are based on no knowledge of this business. I did no knowledge of this before I got into this video today, or this video series today, so I don't know anything about Buffalo Wild Wings other than I really like their beer and wings. So these assumptions are all based on pure guesses, and they're bad. Um, usually this model, like as you can see, it takes a couple hours to build if you're, if you're new at it, and if you get really good, it could take an hour, an hour and a half to make this whole model. 
but really you spend weeks where you spend weeks and months is researching the industry learning all that stuff so you know what numbers to put in this you know what this business looks like you know what the competitors are doing you know how much um, you know room there is left in the market to grow you know if anyone's gonna look to buy this company you'll know all those things we don't and therefore this model is well the only thing we know about this model is that it's a hundred percent wrong it's giving us the wrong story but it's mechanically correct because we have this balance sheet that balances at the bottom. We didn't hard code anything into this. They're all linked together, and it's great. Uh, good work, guys. This is the, one of the more challenging parts of learning uh, to be a financial analyst. Hope you enjoyed the series, and good luck with the assignment.